cloud security, it's a number one priority for every enterprise, for every organization, basically. And what does the future look like? What is a vision that really works for, for every organization, but also how can you prevent and mitigate all the different type of more advanced attacks or what type of technologies are there, like advanced technologies like AI and robotics that can help. And also we're gonna talk about neurodiversity. And I'm here with a legend <laughs> in the domain of security, CJ Moses, you're the new CISO at AWS. Yeah. And talking about this, yeah. you have a new role. Can you explain yeah. your vision, how you're gonna help organizations better than anybody else? No, absolutely. So uh, at AWS, we've always been very customer focused. Um, and working backwards for the customer to be able to identify the things that they need, maybe not exactly always what they want, but what they need in order to be able to be secure um, in, in the cloud environment. We've been working um, a lot over the years in various different technologies in order to be able to do so. I think the things that you're seeing today um, are uh, advancements that we started working on years ago. Um, the idea of being able to, uh, to create our own chipsets so that we can uh, enforce least privilege within our own cloud at the chip level, mm -hmm. such that I don't even have access to the data um, from a security perspective. That means that the uh, you know least privilege is enforced even for insider threat. Um, taking that out to a lot of the new threats that are out there, the more emerging type of things, we have a lot of technology that we've created. Um, but I you know I always like to when when talking about that think about the uh, the use cases towards the betterment of security. An example being is. Uh, you know, we start talking about uh, a lot of the advancements and different technologies that we have along the lines of, say, guard duty. Mm -hmm. um, guard duty is a threat detection capability. We always get the, the question of threat intelligence. Um, all of our customers want to share us to share our threat intelligence with them. Um, we have more than a million customers. It's very difficult to share individually with each of these each of these customers. Calling CISOs up on the phone <laughs> at night this doesn't scale. So the creation of guard duty was our way of taking the threat intelligence that my security operations team that is operating uh, follow the sun globally around the, around the world, operating and securing and make sure these all of our cloud regions stay secure, all of the threat intelligence that's gleaned out of that and pushing it directly into the services we provide, the guard duties, being able to have inspector, um, our security hub, taking that technology and pulling it all together in that threat intelligence into uh, being able to operationally impact uh, customers without them having to answer the phone. The idea is, is that we were able to take things that we're learning very quickly, uh, rotate that into the services we're offering in order to ensure that we continue to be the most secure cloud provider in the world. Yeah, and you advance very rapidly, but on the other hand, we have the cyber attacks that get yeah. more advanced as well. They develop very yeah, yeah. quickly. How do you be sure that you are ahead of them? So uh, the, the number one thing is, is that you always have to remember that there are always humans behind the keyboard of any types of attacks. Um, and the wonderful thing about the cloud is, is that the cloud does advance very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to use the cloud to secure the cloud. We have a lot of advanced capabilities along the lines of machine learning. The idea with machine learning uh, and the ability there is, is that you can look at large amounts of data um, and identify both anomalies um, as well as things that normal human, your human uh, reviews wouldn't. So the idea of being able to then go ahead and take that machine learning, apply it to the vast amount quantities of data we have, push those types of things into our various services such that we're able to thwart things before you even would know that they're occurring mm -hmm. um, in a normal case. The other thing it does is it allows our security engineers that are working across the platform uh, to be able to focus on threat hunting, looking for those things above and beyond uh, what you would traditionally have in a normal environment. Um, this is one of the things that kind of differentiates us is that we do that in a model that's iterative um, and we continually are pushing uh, what we like to call pushing to, you know, uh, sliding left or moving left with a lot of the different capabilities, meaning that any of the types of threats we find, we want to be able to move as close to uh, the initiation of that attack or that, uh, that threat um, such that we're finding it as quickly as we can before it becomes an issue for any of our customers. And those are the techniques that we're, we're putting in, not only into our security services, but the actual services that customers are using, whether it's an EC2, whether it's an S3, whether it's in many of the other different uh, database services that we have. The idea of being able to shift left, be able to identify things before they become a problem, and making sure that our customers are, uh, um, are not impacted by the types of sophisticated threats that are out there. They can rest assured that we're on top of it 
uh, and with uh, you know 25 plus years in the business of doing this and starting out chasing hackers around the world, uh, been there, done that, created this entire, uh, the AWS infrastructure and the design of it uh, from ground up, building AWS, the infrastructure, the services, using the security culture that we have um, in order to ensure that going forward, um, we're going to maintain uh, the, uh, the environment as the most secure uh, cloud provider in the world. And you were talking about using machine learning, a yes. little bit more advanced technology like deep learning, like more so, a yes. AI advancements, robotics. How yeah. can you use this type of disruptive technologies to better protect the enterprise? Yeah, the, the number one thing there is, is that, like I was saying, ML is great for looking at large data sets. Um, the last thing you want is security researchers or security engineers on your side um, to be mulling through a bunch of data that's low level that it's going to take hours and take millions of people. Uh, security engineers are hard to come by. You need to, uh, need to be able to reinforce uh, um, the ability and using smart tools to be able to identify those things in order to get there uh, much sooner so that they're only paying attention to the things that the system kind of brings to their attention as well as then going and looking you know, um, at uh, a smaller set of subdata that they can uh, actually identify threats. Because a lot of times there's precursors to these sophisticated attacks that happen mm -hmm. and you won't notice them. And if you don't notice them up front, you're going to have pay the price in the end. And that's where ML and AI are really good at identifying anomalies, taking those anomalies and then extrapolating and connecting the various different things that have happened. An example being reconnaissance that's done only piecemeal, and in our case, we're able to do this across the, across the globe. Mm -hmm. So if you're operating in many different regions around the world, and we start to see indications of anomalies that align with each other, um, we, we, we call that, in my old business, we call that a clue, and we take that clue and we actually you know, extrapolate on it. And in many circumstances, what we've been able to do is put those things together to identify that there's a threat actor um, that's coming up with a new form of attack, taking that new form of attack and figuring out where they're going, getting ahead of them such that we can disable their, their attack venue or their path before they ever get there. So these are the types of technologies combined, basically combining these advanced technologies with humans with high judgment and great capability um, in order to be able to, uh, to, to do things that uh, previously would have been impossible to do. And the great thing with cloud security is if you detect one Everybody's yeah, exactly. benefiting, and that makes Absolutely. it really, really, really. It's strong, it's yeah. a it's a along the lines of a crowdsourced model yeah. because we're protecting the infrastructure and the services that that everyone on AWS uses. We see that big picture. If I see it in one place, it's going to happen in other places, um, or the attempts will be there. Our intention is is to prevent them in other places as it goes, um, and it it is a uh, never ending battle. Um, but um, compared to the wide open internet that doesn't have um, People like myself, as well as my team, uh, you know, maintaining the security of it, uh, we're in a uh, much better position because uh, I think we, uh, it isn't the wild, wild west no. anymore. We're, we're on top of it and built this infrastructure from day one, 17 years ago, in order to continue to be, uh, be secure uh, for the fullness of time. And I attended your inspiring keynote, oh, yeah. and you were talking about neurodiversity. Absolutely. I think that needs a little bit of explanation. So, um, I think uh, from a neurodiversity perspective, one of the things that um, good decisions come from diversity of thought. Mm -hmm. The way that you get diversity of thought is by having people of different backgrounds, whether it's cultures, introversion, extroversion. Um, a lot of times, you know, we, we do, we have a lot of specialized hiring to make sure that we're looking in different places. If you will look in the same place, for people that look like you, you're going to come up with the same answers that you always have had. So we spent a lot of time and effort and will continue to do so to make sure that um, the people that are at the table when we're making decisions come from many different ways or different places. You know, I'm a, I'm a veteran, I come from the Air Force, I have that background. It's very different uh, sometimes. I look at things a, a lot different than someone who hasn't been in the military, that's from a different country, um, and those, those thoughts are what we don't want people that are just going to say, yes boss, we're going to do what you say. Um, I value the people, and AWS as a whole values the people um, that come from different backgrounds, have that, that diversity of thought um, to allow us to make the best decisions on behalf of our customers, because in the end, um, what we're trying to do is actually provide uh, those capabilities that our customers deserve to have. And when it comes to security, um, we don't have the, the option of uh, groupthink 
or just going along for, the, along for the ride. We want everyone's input from various different thought processes in order to get to the best decisions on behalf of our customers. And protect all the customers better. Absolutely. Very good. Absolutely. CJ, thanks a lot for all the insights. I hope you, you keep me updated because there's many new developments. Absolutely. And for the audience, thank you for watching and looking forward to seeing you next time.